Halo, saya Marlin Stevi Marpaung, saya dosen di Fakultas Ilmu Pendidikan dan Keguruan Program Studi Pendidikan Bahasa Inggris di Universitas Advent Indonesia. Universitas Advent Indonesia merupakan universitas berasrama yang berlokasi di Parompong, Bandung Barat, Jawa Barat. Saat ini saya akan menjelaskan tentang salah satu mata kuliah yang saya ampu di Prodi Pendidikan Bahasa Inggris, yaitu Language Assessment. Mata kuliah Language Assessment memiliki bobot 3 SKS. Mata kuliah ini mempelajari proses pembuatan tes bahasa Inggris yang sesuai dengan kebutuhan language learners. Mata kuliah Language Assessment dirancang untuk membekali mahasiswa dengan pengetahuan tentang fungsi tes, mengapa tes dibutuhkan, jenis-jenis tes dan fungsinya, dan bagaimana membuat tes yang valid dan rehabilitas. Mata kuliah Language Assessment juga memberikan kesempatan kepada mahasiswa untuk memiliki pengalaman secara langsung dalam proses pembuatan tes, menggunakan teknik tes yang sering digunakan dalam language teaching, dan juga menciptakan tes yang sesuai dengan level siswa. Capaian pembelajaran dari mata kuliah language assessment adalah yang pertama, membangun sikap bertanggung jawab dalam menyelesaikan tugas dan tanggung jawab. Mahasiswa menguasai prinsip-prinsip dari tes. Mahasiswa memahami konsep tes bahasa Inggris. Mahasiswa mampu menelaah perbedaan dari berbagai jenis tes bahasa Inggris dan fungsinya. Mahasiswa mendesain tes bahasa Inggris untuk berbagai tujuan. Mahasiswa mampu mengintegrasikan penggunaan tes dan teknologi dalam proses pembelajaran. Dan mahasiswa mampu menerapkan prinsip dan konsep tes yang terbaru dalam mengembangkan pembelajaran bahasa Inggris serta mengimplementasikan kemajuan teknologi untuk mendukung terlaksananya pembelajaran bahasa Inggris. Topik pembahasan selama 16 kali pertemuan di mata kuliah Language Assessment adalah What is a test? Teaching and testing? Kinds of tests and testing? Validity? Reability, Achieving Beneficial Backwash, Stages of Test Development, Common Test Techniques, Testing Writing, Testing Oral Ability, Testing Reading, Testing Listening, Testing Grammar and Vocabulary, Testing Overall Ability, Test for Young Learners, and Test Administration. Metode yang digunakan dalam proses pembelajaran language assessment ada tiga. Yang pertama adalah delivery, interactions, dan assessment. Metode yang pertama adalah delivery, menggunakan ceramah, diskusi, dan role play. Mengawali dan mengakhiri kelas dengan doa. Materi yang digunakan dalam proses pembelajaran language assessment adalah PPT, buku referensi, jurnal, contoh-contoh tes bahasa Inggris. Metode yang kedua yaitu interactions. Mata kuliah language assessment uh, dilaksanakan secara online dengan menggunakan Zoom meeting platform. Dalam berinteraksi antara dosen dan mahasiswa menggunakan Moodle Unai online system WhatsApp group, dan juga email. Metode yang ketiga adalah assessment. Di tabel yang pertama, kita bisa melihat aspek penilaian. Ada lima aspek penilaian dari mata kuliah language assessment dan persentasenya. Yang pertama adalah keaktifan dengan presentasi 10%, presentation 10%, essay 25%, test evaluation 25%, portfolio test making 30%. Table kedua adalah grading system yang digunakan dalam mata kuliah language assessment. Berikut adalah video pengajaran mata kuliah language assessment. Okay, good morning to all of you. We are going to start our class. And then who's like to try to have a pray for us? Or Oh, are you? Would you please pray for us? Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for all your blessing and your protection to each one of us. 
And now we are going to start our lesson with the Marlene. Please send your Holy Spirit so we can understand the lesson well. Thank you, God. Bless our activity during this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Ayu. So this morning, our topic for the lesson is about tests for young learners. So let me share the screen. So in your, in your opinion, uh, what is the range of the young learners? Since, since the first grade of elementary school, ma'am, until okay. junior high school. Okay, what age is that? Um, seven to 12. Seven to 12, all right. Can you see the screen already, not yet? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So Ivana said is from seven to 12. Is there any different ideas about the range of the uh, young learners, the range of the age? Six up to 12. Six up to 12. Okay, let's we see. So that's for young learners. Uh, we cannot start from the baby, right? Since baby is still, uh, uh, they cannot know anything, they cannot talk. And then do you think is toddler is one of the uh, age range for the young learners? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Toddler, toddler is a, a baby, it's kind of baby. Toddler is maybe two years up or below two years. No. So no. So, how about children? How about children? So, it, children in what age do you think is the young learners? Any idea? Yes, ma'am. Okay, six. six. Okay, the children that we consider as young learners actually is start from five to 12. So, if you have... Uh, yeah, young learner students from five to 12, normally it will be from, mm, some of them will be from kindergarten. And then 12 years old, perhaps it will be in uh, sixth, sixth grade, yeah, sixth grade of elementary school or primary. So in this chapter, we are going to talk about a particular requirement for the successful test, uh, testing of young learners and suggestion how this test uh, may best to be done. Is that my voice audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma All right, thank you. So why do you have to have a test for young learners? Why? To do you their ability. Okay. Do you think is young learners is necessary to have a test? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. <laughs> so what is the reason that you said that the young learners should have a test? Any reason for that? Uh, besides we know their ability, when we want to teach, we have to know first about their ability, their capacity. So when we teach them, they can, uh, we can adapt it with, uh, with them. Okay, okay, thank you. Any more ideas about that? Why, what is the reason that you need to have test the young learners? To know which part they are, they are good at and they are master. All right, that's, that's a nice one. <laughs> so actually in this uh, subject for language assessment, yeah, test for young learners is the most. Uh, I like, I like it the most. Yeah, that's quite easy, and then it's interesting, and then we have to be creative in this making to make this test. So there are two possible answers for this question. The first one that we want to make sure that the teaching program is effective is that uh, they learn something or not, or they just. Uh, come to the classroom without any uh, progress. 
And then the second one is the children are really benefiting from the chance to learning a language at a very early age because they, they language is still developing and then do you think uh, they have a chance to learn another language uh, in very early age. So we are going to see uh, the Norway. Do you know where is Norway? Do you, uh, do you know any interesting fact about Norway? Any ideas? Anyone? No? So Norway. let's, let's be, uh, we have a look. So Norway has two official languages. They have Norwegian and Sami, uh, but they actually have two different ways of writing. So, Bokmal and Nainorks, I, I'm, I'm not sure is that the, the way we pronounce it, but that's the way uh, if, we, I, if I see from uh, the spelling. And then beside that, they actually fluent in English. That's interesting, yeah. They have different kind of writing and then they two official language. And then the other, in other side, they are fluent in English. So English is taught in Scandinavian schools from a young age in Norway. So as soon as the children are uh, mastered the writing and reading in their native tongue or in their mother tongue, and then the English is started to introduce. And then the age uh, is different by the country and the region, but in uh, general, Every student in Norway have, will have undergone uh, at least a year of formal English language education by the age of 10. And then another surprisingly new facts about Norway that the learning of English in Norway appears to be highly successful. And then children up to the age of 13 are not normally tested in the subject. That's interesting, yeah? They not normally have a formal test up to age of 13. So compared to our uh, in Indonesia means that the age of 13, it will be in the first uh, junior high school or year seven. But they have English, they flu, they English is fluent. So let's we move to the next one. The positive things that you are going to have if you want to test the young learners. Do you have any ideas about that one? What is the positive things that you are going to do if you want to test, oh, sorry. What is the positive things that you think that you will have it if you test the young learners? Any ideas? Anyone? Give the objects, ma'am. Uh, Give the object. The pictures, the sounds, music, something like that. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any different ideas about that one? The positive things that you, if you want to test the young learners? Anyone? All right then. So there are two positive things that you are, if you want to test the young learners. The first one, your test will, will provide an opportunity uh, to develop the children positive attitudes toward assessment. Because sometimes if we give uh, assessment to the very young uh, students, they will uh, have a trauma, you know? They sometimes they do not like it. So that's the first thing that you need to put on your mind that uh, this test that you are going to give it to your young learners, it provides a positive attitudes toward the assessment. The second one, it will help the young learners to recognize the value of assessment. So th th this is very important to remember for you all as a future teacher someday. So there are recommendations uh, to the testing approach based on uh, huge. Anyone 
Okay, this is three recommendation that you are going to do where before you start in creating your uh, test for young learners. So special effort be made to make testing an integral part of assessment and assessment an integral part of teaching program. It means that both assessment and teaching program, it should be consistent. And then it should reach the learning objective at the end of that, when the testing and the teaching program is assessment, it means that the learning objective will be achieved. The second one is feedback from the test should be immediate and positive. When you have done the test, you need to correct the test uh, immediately because the students need to know uh, their weaknesses. Also, they have to know what they have done. So, and then uh, the feedback that you will provide it, it should be uh, positive. The second one is self-assessment by children be made a part of teaching program. There are three things that will be uh, considered in this uh, recommendation. The first one, it will be develop a habit of monitoring their own process or progress. Uh, it will allow them to take pleasure in what they are achieving and then improve their ability. So this recommendation, uh, you need to put uh, on your program when you are going to do your test. So remember, do you remember what is the test should be? Anyone? It should be real and valid. Yes, it is. Even though this is only for young children, young learners, but it doesn't mean that your test should be not valid and not real. It should be. And then the second one is the positive backwash is more important than ever. Uh, there are two crucial elements that you need to put uh, before you starting create your test. Do you think, why is it, what is that? What do you think? Choose the appropriate techniques, ma'am. Yes, that's the most important one. <laughs> Choose the proper of, uh, appropriate technique because children is different, right? We have to get their uh, uh, attention. Otherwise they will not do the test and then the result will be bad. And then we cannot uh, reach our objective at the end of that. So the first crucial elements that you have to think uh, you have to think before you create your test is the writing of full specifications and then the choice of appropriate test techniques that already mentioned before or by February. So uh, there are special features for young learner uh, tests that you need to remember. The first one, uh, children is not uh, having long attention to the test, yeah? So you need to make sure that your test, it should be um, enough to get their attention. Your test uh, should not be long. Otherwise, the teachers, uh, the students will not do it. So young learners have a relative short attention span. So you, your test, should not be long because uh, in order to get their uh, uh, attention and they attract to that, so you have to make your task is not too long, but that's quite enough to, um, to measure their ability. Children enjoy stories and play. So in this age, normally our students like to move wherever they like. Some of them will be kinesthetic students. So they like to have stories and play. So you can put games on your test. So the student will like it and then they will enjoy it when they do it, the test. So for example, you can put word game that the children need to find in comics or in a puzzle books. The third one, children responds well to pictures, attractive typo, uh, typography and color. 
So as I mentioned before, uh, pictures, color, it will be, uh, it will be one, one of, uh, it will be nice if you put on your test. Yes, it will be cost. Yeah, because when you put too many pictures on it and then the test will be long enough and then the pages will take more than two or three pages. And then remember when if we want to print the test in color and then the price will be quite uh, high compared to black and white. But uh, the test, uh, your test, it should, uh, should include these features if possible. But now we can use online uh, test, uh, online assessment, where you can create your tests online. The fourth one is, you know, our kids, uh, our uh, the our student or young learners, uh, their first language is still developing. Their la first language and cognitive abilities is still developing. Some of us will do the same too. There are many new words actually nowadays that related to technology and then still, we're still developing with that. Especially the young learners, they still, learn. There are many uh, languages that just knew it. Some of them still they using their mother tongue, like for example, uh, they were asking for uh, milk, for example. They will, make, uh, they will make the sound just like they were a baby, kind of that, because they're still developing. So your task should be the ones that the children should be expected to end, handle comfortably in their language because they still their language their first language is still developing since children learn through social interaction where they like to have a, a peer or a classmates activities so it will be appropriate to include the tasks that involve interaction between two or more children and then the last one the last features is if teaching and learning involve tasks which are integrated and then the similar tasks that you have it in the teaching and learning progress process should be involved in your tests. Okay, what is what do you think is the recommended techniques that we can use for uh, the test for young learners? Coloring and drawing. Coloring and drawing is one of the techniques, yes. Anyone else? So we are going to start to see the techniques to test listening. What do you think is that? Identifying objects, ma'am. Identifying objects, that's a nice one. So placing objects or identifying people is one of the good techniques if we want to uh, test the listening uh, ability. So this is the example of that. So for example, Alice is telling Mr. Coates about the animals she has on, uh, her, on her clothes, which animal is there on each of uh, her clothes, listen and draw lines. So this is another example. And the other example that you can use just like this. So you are going to read that, like for example, you ask the students to put the book on the top of the shelf or put the shoes beside the bed. So they are going to draw a line, just like the example done for you. The book is on the top on the shelf and then you can, you can put the other five items wherever you like and then you give them instruction to draw a line to the uh, object that you are going to put. Uh, the next one is color and draw uh, on existing line drawing. This is nice, you know. I have been done this one and then this, this is nice. So you can provide a black and white uh, picture just like this see that and then you can ask the students uh, give instruction to the students at the same time they will having fun but they also have uh, the listening test okay the other example is information transfer 
uh, sorry, the other techniques is not example. Uh, these techniques is involve some simple reading and write, uh, writing as well. So this is the example of information transfer. So uh, there are some information written on the box and then they will hear uh, an interview, then they will find the information they, they need to write it down on the chart based on the list, listening activity or the interview that you will provide it. But you have to remember that uh, when you give the interview, you should include sufficient redundancy and pauses. This function that they will have a time to write the answer and think for a while. Okay, any question about the techniques for uh, listening test? Is that clear enough? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we move to techniques to test reading. What do you think is techniques for the test reading? What do multiple you think? Multiple choice. Multiple choice, one of that. So multiple choice is one of the tests very common in English test, yeah? Very common. So reading can be tested by multiple choice and possible if you provide it with pictures. Multiple choice can be used in context of conversation, interview, and discussion. So for the reading test, there are three things that you need to remember. So avoid the chance for children to guess the answer, just like we have learned uh, in our other tests. And then ask students to identify the correct word. And then short answer techniques can be very successful. So this is the example of uh, multiple choices and short answer. So the first picture is about short answer where the students will answer, uh, will put some words on the uh, space provided based on the reading. Or this is another example for multiple choices. Next techniques is for writing. What do you think is for writing? What is the best technique that you can use for writing? Yeah, filling with pictures. Uh, filling the gaps with pictures, that's one of that. Anyone else? Cartoon story. Man. Cartoon stories, yes. What else? Using anagram with pictures. Man. Okay, so. The first techniques for the writing is anagram with pictures. This anagram with pictures to test vocabulary and spelling. And then using puzzle is good for that. So this is the example of anagram with pictures. You can find uh, very colorful pictures on it. And then you put all on your uh, blank paper and then you can create the words. And then don't forget to provide uh, a blank space for them to answer. And then the next technique for writing is cartoon stories. So cartoon stories uh, tells a simple story. So this is the example of that. So this kind of comic strip, uh, this is another example of that. So you can ask the students to write their stories based on the uh, comic strip. Based, uh, there are four uh, pictures on it and then they create their own stories using the pictures provided. Or the other example for the pictures is this one, the second picture. And then there are four pictures, uh, the series of pictures on it. And then ask your students to create their stories based on the pictures. The other techniques is gap filling with pictures. So the, this technique uh, you can use for reading and writing as well. So this is the example of the gap filling with pictures where there, there is a word bank over here and then there is a situation on the classroom. And then based on the word bank uh, and then based on the picture, the children or your long, young learners will answer the question provided uh, on the space 
on the uh, blank space. Next, we move to testing for oral ability. This one is quite tricky, yeah. We need to be creative and find many resources for this. So the first techniques for oral ability, you need to ask forward questions about the child and the family. What do you think you are going to do with this technique? To tell about their family, ma'am? Yes, or they can tell about their day or their weekend or their family that they, they have to, uh, to talk about everything about their life. For example, their feeling, that's another, uh, that's uh, you can use when you are going to test uh, oral ability with this technique. The second technique is give a card of, uh, with a scene and ask them to point out people. This is the example of a card with a scene. You can uh, ask, uh, you can give this picture to the students and then ask them to identify something or explain about what happening in the park. Just like this boy and, uh, uh, sorry, this boy and this girl, what happened with them and then uh, the dog or anything on the picture. The next technique for oral ability is give small cards, each with an object drawn on it and ask to place each of the object in particular location on a larger scene card. So you have to provide a small card and then another larger scene card. And then you ask, you will uh, ask the students to put the small card in a particular location on the scene, uh, on the larger scene card. The next uh, uh, techniques is give a short stories of pictures that tell a stories. It's the same like uh, short stories like the cartoon. You can use it to have uh, listening or sorry oral oral ability test. And then next is sets of picture are presented as to identify the odd one out and explain what is different from the others. Uh, another one is give to familiar pictures, but uh, different in obvious way, and then ask for the differences. So this is the example of that. If I ask you, can you find the differences between these two pictures? What do you think is that? The coconut tree. The shell. Yes, the coconut tree, the shell, what else? Crab. The, the crab, what else? The books. The box, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else? The fish, ma'am. The fish? Okay. All right. The color of the fish, yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right. What else? The coin, ma'am. The coin? Coin. Oh, number, the numbers of coin is different, right? And what else? Cloud. The cloud. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's interesting if you give this to your students? Yes. yes. And then, yeah, you need to find a very uh, a good high resolution, yeah? So it will be easy and nice to see. So we are going to use the technique, uh, so where there is a, sorry, there is a technique to interact with peers as well. So the first one is say a specified numbers of things about another classmate, and then their peers have to guess who is being described. So for example, uh, Nilam and Heli is having the uh, uh, interaction, uh, the test together, and then actually uh, Heli uh, is talking about Hirim without saying the name, and then Nilam has to uh, guess who is the name of the person that being described by Heli. So you can use this technique. Uh, and then uh, the second technique is uh, you can use uh, your pictures uh, of postcard, present three different pictures, and then each child is given three of them. Two pictures in common and one is different. And then by asking and answering question in turn, they will discover which pictures they have in common. And then it should be, remember this picture, the, all the pictures should have something in common. Otherwise the, the task will be end soon 
and then there is no much of language being used in this test. And then next one is to uh, give two different pictures, give uh, A and B. So you are going to present uh, A picture to the first student and B, the B picture to the second student. And then the first child, uh, child will describe the object on their picture while the others will see if they have the same object on their picture. And then it will take turn, the second child will do the same until they find specified number of objects that having in the both pictures. So this is more examples about the past. So you can use like this and you can use crossword like this or this is the other one, you can use it. Uh, and then uh, Another example is like word search. So that's a lot of, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, tests uh, or you can create. So what do you think? Is it fun? Do you think it's yes, fun? Do you yes, think it's fun? Yeah, this is nice, right? Making tests for young learners is very nice. You will enjoy it. And then, but the, the other problem that we have to do is we have to find uh, many pictures on it, be creative. And then after that, we can have it, this kind of test. And then we can uh, give it to the students and then we can receive, uh, we can achieve this objective. And then it will help us with our tasks. So any questions so far about this one? So you, because you are after this, you are going to create yours. Do you have any question? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So my question is, is there any things that can make our test is not valid, ma'am? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the, the, the other problem that valid, yeah, valid, uh, valid, uh, I don't think that we, if we use proper techniques, it will be okay, but reliable maybe. Yeah, the, the, the other problem that we are going to have it to make our test more real, uh, reliable, valid maybe if we use the same uh, uh, level of the students with the material, that will be easy. Uh, not, not easy, I mean, but we can get the valid test, but reliable maybe is, will be different because um, to make the test more reliable, we have need we need to pay attention more regarding the layout, the kind of the test, the color, the handwriting, uh, the typing, kind of that. Is that clear enough, Itapana? Um, how about the test that is using yes or no answer, ma'am? Is it rel reliable enough for? Uh, Yes, you can use it, but sometimes it will not uh, engage the creative thinking of the students. The critical thinking also is not engaging. So better you use a different kind of technique. It's not, it, it, we, we cannot say no, but it will be nice if we use another one of technique that required critical thinking of the students. Any, is that clear enough? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Any more question? Ma'am, I want to ask. Yes. Uh, how many questions should we give to young learners, ma'am? Maybe uh, there is the limit of the number. Okay. So we cannot say what is how many questions and then the limit of the, the numbers of the test, yeah? It depends what you are going to measure. Yeah. Kembali lagi, what you are going to measure, what the objective of the learning process that you are going to achieve. That's the one that you need to pay attention. Like one thing that you need to remember, the children cannot pay attention for a long time. So you need to make sure that the test will be answered, all the questions will be answered by the students, instead that you are going to give them too many questions, but half of that, they will not answer that. So 
we have when we want to decide how many questions that we are going to use in that test. So you have to go back to your purpose of the test, your objective, what you are going to measure. All right, is that clear enough, Devani? Yes, ma'am. Any more question, everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I sometimes, not sometimes, but oftenly, when I witness uh, a teacher teach in class for young learners, they tend to scream, or when they teach, they their voice is quite loud. Uh, is it is it appropriate to do that? Because what I see, many teachers do that. Okay, <laughs> it's a hard one. So um, I'm not saying that it's uh, okay or it's not okay. Yeah, perhaps uh, your intonation. It should be. It's not. It's not like scream. It's not like yelling. Perhaps your intonation should be. Uh, uh, you can use your intonation for properly, instead of uh, screaming or yelling or uh, shouting. Yeah. Better you. Uh, perhaps like for example, attention, students. I need you. Just like that. So they will. They will get your uh, the uh, they will you will get their attention and then without shouting without yelling or without uh, screaming they will listen to you <laughs> in some situation not always yeah maybe you witness because of at that time the students is was uncontrolled and then as a result the teacher should uh, yelling or shouting but uh, actually at the end of that uh, it's not always it uh, is not always happen all right it's not always happen normally young kids will be nice even though sometimes uh, they do not listen to you but they will be very nice you will younger yeah, every time you see them, you will smile and then you will love them. 